So, okay, let's go. What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 36 of the GeekCast. I am Bobby, the Geek Guru, joined by my buddy from the UK, Toby. What is up, Toby? What is up, everybody? <laughs> and uh, we are joined by a good friend of the show, Sean Capri. What is up, Sean? Hey, everyone. It's me, Sean Capri. <laughs> hey, Sean. Hey. Oh, uh, hi. <laughs> uh, welcome back. I'm glad to, to have you back. Um for those that don't know, Sean and I are in like a little love fest lately. Like we've been tweeting to each other and messaging each other on Facebook and stuff. So, I uh, any chance I can get to, to talk to Sean is always a good thing. So, I what you don't break. know is I'm I'm slowly moving my way closer to you. I'm actually in a totally <laughs> different house right now. I've yeah. I've moved over to the next <laughs> province. I'm in Saskatchewan now. Oh, the next nice. will be Manitoba. We'll go through a little Canada geography lesson okay. here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then I've only got like four more to go, and I'll be there in you know two years. <laughs> good, good. He'll he'll secretly like infiltrate your, your house for me, and he'll be there like with a lampshade on his head, and you won't even. That's know fine. It. Just leave, leave. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> just leave Chelsea in in Canada, because. She she has a hate relationship for me. She despises me just because I just because I walked away from Fallout Four. She like totally like it was funny. We're tech like we're we're not texting. We're we're tweeting back and forth to each other, and just joking and goofing around with each other. And then I to I I mentioned that I I walked away from Fallout, and all of a sudden it was like boom, like <laughs> totally different tweets coming at me. Like I'm disappointed in you, and all. And I'm like wow, like this is crazy, but. I like it. She's a, she's a gamer. I like that stuff. So yeah, she doesn't get it if you don't if you don't like that game. She just doesn't understand. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's good because I've walked away from Fallout. So as long as she's distracted by you, she doesn't oh, notice that's... that I'm on other things. <laughs> so she went from hating you to hating me. That's that's good. So you're yeah, so you're deflecting. so your your relationship's better now. And and <laughs> it's all better thanks than to ever. Me. Better, uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna kick this episode off like we do every episode with our geek outs. Uh, Toby, I'll throw it to you. What are you geeking out about? Uh, I'm geeking out about a new video series that I've started called The Details in the Dungeon, which is basically uh, an analytical look at Zelda dungeons. Um, last week I did the Forest Temple from Twilight Princess, and my next one's going to be the Goron Mines from Twilight Princess, so the second dungeon. So I'm just excited to be getting on with that. It's a good It's a good series. Um... I, I enjoy it myself. A lot of people seem to be enjoying it. Like, mm. you're getting a lot of positive comments and, and feedback from it, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, views are slowly each day. You're getting more views each day, so that's a good thing. It's, it seems like it's getting its legs under it and going. Um, and it's always like, you know, when you watch some analytical videos, it just always seems more serious when it comes from a British British voice. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I'm watching. I'm like, let me see here. Let me take some notes. <laughs> yeah. And I got my clipboard out. And I'm like, okay, pause. I'm gonna go check that out. Okay, yeah, this guy knows what but he's doing. You know what? Like, it's really interesting because when I was making the video, um, you know, as you're playing, you just take everything for granted, and it just sort of absorbs into mm -hmm. you without thinking about it. But when you when you're pouring over footage like little bit by little bit, you notice all the little details in that, and you're like, wow, that is actually really clever the way they've designed it. So. Yeah. Um, Sean, what are you geeking out about? Well, I'm geeking out about being on this show. I'm oh. like starstruck by you guys, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I'm geeking out about kind of like toys and collectibles. So I've got my Roy. I, I Well, Chelsea actually picked him up, and thanks to you. I don't think we were going to get this guy, but I think she did it to piss you off. For some, I don't know what kind of feud I, you guys have. I told so. you, I told you, see, <laughs> I I bring betterment to your relationship, so you, really you, do. <laughs> you need me in your life. <laughs> yeah, I thought I didn't think we, I thought we were just gonna get um, Rob, but uh, then next thing I know, I've got. I didn't even know until I saw the tweet to you that we had this thing in our possession. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. So I'm, I'm loving our toys. Um, I'm trying to figure out now. Like I'm now, I'm running into space issues. Uh, I only had so much, so much shelf space for uh, so many of these things. So. I've got some serious decisions to make. And then the other thing that I'm geeking out about is I just randomly found um, this 20-year-old binder of mine with these Marvel um, Overpower game. Oh, so wow. it was like it was like Magic the Gathering Light, but for comic book characters and for Marvel. And um, 
I like sort of was just kind of cleaning things up and just found this this binder. This thing is like this thing is an immaculate shape, and it is. I just want to find somebody to play this game with, and I wasn't really too much into comics as a kid. Like I was more into games, and and my friends were more into comics. But everybody, like all the characters that I did know, were from this game. Mm-hmm. So I just opened this whole thing, and just like this flood of memories come back, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how old was I when I when I had this? I was probably probably 11 or 12 or something like that and it's perfectly um alphabetized <laughs> everything wow. is ocd to the max when i was 12 <laughs> years old so i'm like oh maybe i maybe i've been like this for a little longer than i thought but i'm totally geeking out about this i want to i want to go in and um to different comic book stores and see if i can go find some older stuff from or even go check out on ebay but i've been like probably, revived yeah. and, like, my collector has been has been revived within. That is really cool when you when you go and you find stuff like from your childhood and that. Like I've got a binder full of Pokemon cards in like yeah. a plastic sleeves. It's like you go through them and it's like the original 150, and you're like, oh my god, this is like so nostalgic, and they're in mint condition. Yes. <laughs> didn't didn't one time? Maybe I'm wrong, Toby. Didn't hmm. you, didn't you have when from when you were a kid? You made a card game with Zelda. Yeah. I started to make. I've got about five different characters. Yeah. So I've got. I was making my own card game, and I was drawing all the pictures, and it was very similar to Pokemon. They had like different moves based on their character skills and stuff. So you had like Link, and then you had Dark Link. There was Ganondorf. There was an Ocarina item card. Like, and I think actually it would be really cool to have a game like that from like an official Nintendo card game. That's funny. That's Definitely. Funny. That's awesome. Um. Myself, I'm geeking out about Batman vs Superman. I just saw it twice as of yesterday. I plan on going again tonight to watch it again. Like I know the movie is getting a tremendous amount of hate, but I'm in love with it straight up. Like I think that um, you know, I'm going to do videos today. I have a spoiler cast, vi- a spoiler cast podcast special edition of the Geek Cast that I'm doing tomorrow with Alan and Joey Ferris. Um, Sean, if you're around, if you want to jump in, you're more. I don't think you guys want me as a part of that. I've heard Joey's spoiler cast on it. I know, I know how you feel about it. I think I'll be a downer on that podcast. That's fine because Alan's going to be a downer. Alan needs help because I know Alan already. Alan hates it already. But oh man, I you know, regardless aside, like I feel like for me, I feel like it is the best Batman that we've had on screen ever. Um, ben Affleck just kills it, and I think that a lot of people are. That's the one thing that's coming out of all the reviews and everything that everybody's taking is they're they're really high on Ben Affleck, um, so I, I I can't wait to see Suicide Squad now because I know Batman's in that and I just can't wait till we get a standalone Batman movie um, from and he's actually my understanding is he's directing a standalone Batman as well as starring in it so and if you look at anything that he's done like Argo and the Town and and stuff like that like he's really knocking it out the park as far as being a director and being an actor. I don't know what happened. He just totally turned around and got very serious with his acting, and he's really been doing well. So I'm happy about it. I, I love that aspect of it. Um, but that's, I would just love to see Kevin Smith star as the penguin in that movie. Oh, uh, come on. And then, like, getting all his little buddies back. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to go bad. You know what's weird, though? Is like It's like they don't talk anymore. It, that's the vibe I'm getting. It's like... For some reason, it's like they 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 used to be best friends like all the time, and then like if you listen to Kevin Smith's podcast lately, like they're just it's it's lacking. They're not like Mallrats too. Kevin Smith is doing, and apparently the only one that hasn't said he's has agreed to do it is is Ben Affleck, and that's kind of a uh, Batman. Yeah, I know, but it's kind of discouraging to think that like that's kind of where you got your start, man. Like Mallrats was one of the first movies he ever did and then yeah. you know Chasing Amy was the movie that got him all this critical acclaim and all that stuff and kind of got him you know his star you know you know put his star on the map so to speak so I don't yeah, know we'll see. I'm sure they're just busy I'm sure they're good yeah I hope so because I, I would really like to see them you know and I know that like the minute that it was announced Kevin Smith seemed to be the only one that was like he's going to kill this movie he's going to crush it he's going to do a great you know and 
So I was right there with them because I remember Kevin Smith saying, and I don't want to make this about, all about Kevin Smith, but on his uh, an evening with Kevin Smith, he would al- always talk about Ben Affleck could play the shark in Jaws. Yeah, like, that guy I could play that. anything, right? Yeah, so yeah. I remember, I'm like, I have faith in Kevin Smith. I have faith in Ben Affleck. Like, I was right there right from the beginning. But anyways, yeah. I don't want to belabor this. Um, let's move into what we're playing. Uh, Sean, I'll kick it to you first. What are you playing? I played a really quick uh, playthrough of Wolfenstein the Old Blood this week. And that game is just a solid little single-player campaign. I just love it. Um, I'm really... I know it's not machine games, but it gets me really excited for Doom. Um, really just like liking what's happening with these revivals of these old, pretty hardcore first-person shooters. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then last night I just started playing The Division, and I think it's got its hooks in me a little bit. I didn't like the beta. I've come around on that, and it's mostly I only bought it because everybody else is playing it. Yeah. And I'm like, I just kind of want to go online, hang out with some people, and play some games. And the next thing I know, I'm walking around Manhattan, and I'm shooting some guys. I'm like, I gotta go get that loot. And then I realized that's the hook, and I'm yeah. I'm totally in. So as soon as I'm done this, I'm gonna go play some more of the division. <laughs> I uh, I haven't gotten that yet. I, I'm I'm planning on getting it. Yeah. Same reason. Like I, but I did like the beta, but I only played the beta for about 40 minutes. And what I did play of it, I did enjoy. So mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I, I just, just wasn't compelled to go online. I'm like, I didn't really want – at the time, I just didn't want to go on and play with strangers. But but yeah. this week, I feel like that's kind of what I'm in for. So it just totally depends on, on my mood, on what I'm going to play. And I, I'm going to try and rush in as much as that because we've got so many things coming out in the next couple weeks, really. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like in uh, that, I played a little bit of, the, of Republic, Republic, and I didn't like a, it. Uh, it's a, it's like it's it's a, it's like a stealth game. It's a third person. And it's it's this. Uh, you you play as well. Your character is actually this sort of ominous, uh, uh, anonymous kind of character is helping out this girl named Hope, and she's trying to escape this kind of prison. It's a dystopian. I'm not sure if it's in the future. And you're you control the security cameras, and you try and maneuver Hope around security guards and things like that. So it's a lot of stealth stuff. Gotcha. But um. Basically, if you get caught, you don't die. They just kind of like toss you in your cell, and then you can hack into the door and let her out, and then you do it all over again. So there's not a whole mm-hmm. lot of tension, and uh, I just I don't know. It it's a bit of a miss for me. It's a it's a small indie game, uh, but yeah, it didn't really ke- uh, didn't didn't really do it for me. Uh, Toby, can I guess what you're playing or what you've been playing? <laughs> uh, well, you know one thing that I've been. I playing. know two things you've been playing. Oh, been playing go on in. Twilight Princess. Yeah. And, and Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah. Well, the thing is, that I've only played Twilight Princess to record footage, so I okay. haven't actually got any further in that yet. Okay. So. Okay. But um, yeah. Last night we was on GTA Five, mm-hmm. and I made this. Ama- you didn't get to experience this, Bobby, but I made a ginormous loop the loop race. Right. So now in GTA Five, you can stack objects, which is something you couldn't do before, and that means you can take a prop which is like a, a fence or a ramp or a container or something, and you can rotate it in any direction. You can make it merge into the floor, so you can sort of merge objects into each other to make new, like, roads and stuff. And mm-hmm. and anyway, so I, you can get these massive platforms. They're supposed to be, like, floating on the ocean, but you can put them anywhere. So when you turn them upside down, they've got a lovely flat bottom. So... What I did is I made a ginormous loop de loop that was like as high as a skyscraper and it just goes back round itself and then you do a little jump off the end. And that's basically the race. You you go up, you go over and round, and then you just drive back round in the circle and do it again. And it worked so well. Like you can't do it without boosts, so I had to put boosts like you can have a GTA race, so you can put these little boosts so when you drive over it in your car you can press left trigger, like, and you get a little boost, and you you sort of hold one, you get to the top of the loop the loop then you use the boost, and then you, it just gives you enough speed to go around, and it just feels so amazing, like, it just boggles my mind, like, the, the stuff that you can do with this game, even years after it's come out, and it's still fun for me, so. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a very good MMO, where you start to utilize the world to create stuff, and then mm. You know, the game is pretty basic, you know, it's pretty straightforward, but then when the community really embraces it and grabs it, and then they start creating all this different stuff, and it's like, oh, wow, like, I can go do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's the vibe I get from 
from GTA Five, at least on the online community, is like, you know, I got you guys are playing, and it's like when I first got with you guys, it was a lot of races and stuff, and now you're moving into different stuff, and it's like, mm. but it's still fun. Like every time you get on, it's like a lot of fun. Like, and now you're yeah. mixing a couple races here, you know, stunts for snipers, you know, whatever, and it's like you're doing all we're doing all this different stuff, and it's like it's mm-hmm. just getting better and better and better. So yeah, yeah. it's cool. Um, and then I the one thing so. I will say, the one thing I do like. So, sorry to cut you off. The one thing I do like, like that we saw last night was like, as well, Rockstar sees what becomes popular, and then they go and start to create their own yeah, levels exactly. similar yeah. to that. So that way it's not like, you're not like just based upon fans creating this stuff. Like, Rockstar's getting involved as well. So yeah. I think that's kind of good, and it shows like they're really supporting and, and giving back to the community. Yeah, it definitely does. Also, um, I bought... Uh, Link to the Past again on 3DS though, so I was playing the v- Virtual Console version of that, and if you get that, if you get any SNES game on your 3DS, I urge you to play it in the original resolution, because yeah. there's a little option, you press the touch screen, you go to options, and then you can change the resolution, and playing it in the original SNES option just makes the game look so much crisper and nicer. Yeah. Like I don't even know why they have the option to not have that because it just looks so much better. Yeah. So, all they do is like if without that it's just slightly stretched but it just doesn't look right. Like the text on the screen's a bit fuzzier and all of that. So now are you playing with an XL or a, a regular it's an X- XL, yeah. Okay, that might be why, because they're stretching it to fill that screen. Yeah, sure. but it's not like the whole way across. It's yeah, 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 just yeah. a little bit more. But yeah. I bought... Super Mario World on my 3DS the week it came out, and yeah. that, like, agreed, it looks spot on. Like, yeah. I don't know how they did it. I don't care. I'm just glad they did it. It looks gorgeous. Um, Sean, do you have a new 3DS, or...? I do, but it's still in the box. <laughs> this, oh. this Super Nintendo Virtual Console thing is as me thinking I might go rip it out, though. Yeah, it's the it's... Uh, Majora's Mask Limited Edition one. That's the one okay. I got. Okay. And yeah. uh, But there's been no reason, really, for me to swap everything over and everything. Yeah. So I've just got, like, a basic... I've been playing on a, on a basic blue one, but I've got my collection of 3DSs that are sort of mm-hmm. just sitting there. I don't really want to get them scratched up, so this blue one I don't really care about. But the, all the Super Nintendo Virtual Console, like, I think I'm going to have to go open this thing up, I don't know. I really want to, like, Link to the Past on a 3DS sounds incredible. Yes. I love the Link Between yeah. Worlds. Like, that to me is just exactly how I want to experience that, and <laughs> this thing has me really conflicted. And I'm yeah. using the circle pad as well to move Link around, and it works surprisingly well. Like, some, nice, people, yeah. some people are, like, D-pad purists for SNES <laughs> games and stuff, but I find that the, you know, because it's quite fluid Link's movement anyway, so this, the, yeah. the uh, circle pad works well. Yeah, like I'm, a, I go with the D-pad all the time. Like if I have the yeah, option, I just it feels old school. It brings me back. I've bought, um, like I said, I bought Super Mario World. Earthbound just came out, and I'm buying that. Um, I'm going to buy it this Wednesday, just because I need to continue to support this because I want Mother Three translated, brought over, um, and I want them to just tell Etoy to shove it and make a Mother 4. Like, I really want them to, to continue this series. I love Earthbound Mother. It's just, it's so good. Just amazing. Um, is that the only games you've got so far out there, Toby? Uh, yeah, at the okay. moment. Um, I do want to get uh, Mario World, though. That's, yeah, you got to have that one. That's the yeah, one. exactly. You know. But I, I, too, like it because you play a little bit and then you just shut it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't lose its place or anything like that, and then you go back, pop it open. Yeah, that's you, get, you can create restore points as well. Yes. So yeah. That's what I love about the 3DS, is that feature of just closing it and then opening yeah. it back up and playing later. Um, myself, I've been playing some Uncharted 3, just working my way through that. Um, I got to Syria. That's where I'm, so I'm, I'm still in the beginning of the game, but I'm, I'm making my way through Syria right now. Um just trying to get as much of that. I want to beat that before Uncharted 4 hits because I never played the Uncharted series. So uh, just to rehash, like I what beat do you one think of three so far. I'm liking it. I'm liking yeah. it. The graphics are, are awesome. Yeah. Uh, two is still my favorite so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I because two just man when that opening it just sucks you in, and yeah. I feel like that's the difference. You know that that, that that's basically Neil Druckmann and them guys and and. Yeah. 
that's that's the vibe because they didn't do one. One was eh. I liked what they did. I thought it was cool. Move along. Two just blows you out of the water. But you yeah. can see a difference between two and three. Uh, you know this, Sean. I've told you before, and I know Toby knows this. Like, I love Last of Us. I think it's a phenomenal game. I think it's one of those games that people will talk about for the rest of their lives as being that one game that kind of like really sucked them in. And that when I was playing Uncharted 2, that was the vibe I got immediately. I was mm. like, oh, my God, this is just like Last of Us. Like, I could see where they went from Uncharted 2 to Last of Us, took what they learned there, brought it over. What I like is, is what they learned in uh, Last of Us, and, you know, hopefully they'll take some of that and bring it back. You know, obviously they can't bring all that post-apocalyptic stuff, but they'll bring some of the stuff back and make it better. I'm just kind of curious to see what they do after Uncharted 4. Like, do they go back to Last of Us, or do they just go someplace fresh and new? So well, I, th- I think they need to go someplace fresh, to be honest. Part of me wants to see them go back to Last of Us, but at the same time, fresh would be nice. I would like mm-hmm. to see that. Um, I would totally be fine if we never see a Last of Us sequel. I could play The Last of Us over and over for the rest of my life yeah. anyways, so I would, I would be fine. I don't need a, a continuation of that story. I feel like we're now building things up in our head of what yeah. this could be or should be, and I mean, people were already had opinions about the ending, yeah. so that kind of leads you into some iffy territory. If Uncharted anything, two, to, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just say, if anything, if they did a sequel, I would almost say to do a prequel because there's a 20 year stretch from when the the game starts to when you actually run into Joel again. So I wouldn't mind seeing like a prequel, like what took place in between. If they're going to go a different direction and not use Ellie and Joel, then I would say don't do it at all. Um, but I would be okay with a prequel. I don't know that I want a sequel. I, I, I don't yeah, know what they yeah. achieve with a sequel. You know, I think like leave it there. Let your mind just. It's one. Of, it's like it's like one of them books or movies where something happens and you just think like you make up stuff in your mind that's better than mm-hmm. what they're going to put on the paper. You know, so. Yeah, the, and did you play the DLC for? For The Last yes. of Us? Yes, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, so that was a good idea. Yeah, And that's like what that. I mean, like, when, when they took that stuff, when, like, you had the clickers, and then you had the, the humans, the people, and you could, like, throw a bottle in the direction, and the clickers and the people would attack each other. And you just sit back, like, mm-hmm. okay, this is good. Or, what I used to like to do is I used to like to throw an empty bottle at the humans. The clickers would hear it, they'd run over and start attacking them. Now they're fighting, and then I would take, like, a, a Molotov cocktail and throw it in and just burn them all to death. Yeah. And then I go, okay, I did what I did, pick up all the guns and stuff and go off. Um, the other thing I'm playing is Fire Emblem Fates. Of course. Oh, this game, it is so good. So good. And I'm playing Birthright. I'm probably right at the end now. I'm about 30 hours and 15 minutes in. I did a lot of grinding, which tends to make the game easier. Um Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I was grinding, grinding, grinding on this game just to boost my troops and get every Like, all the people that I use are all level 20s. I imported the Fire Emblem characters, which they are badass. Like, oh, yeah. if you don't use them, you are just a fool. Like, they are so strong. And where all the other characters go to level 20 and stop, they keep going. So, oh. like, like, Ike is level 30, Marth is level 30. Like, I have all them guys up stronger. So they actually help you because the problem is, is, like, when you're picking up new characters along the way, mm-hmm. it makes it easier to grind because you have your, your safety net where you don't have to worry about dying because those guys are so strong that they can protect and you can build up the weaker. Because what I'll do is I'll put them in a wait, in a wait mode, like, away from the battle, and I'll send mm-hmm. all my weaker characters in. It's inevitable they're all going to get wiped out, but they might move up a level or two in that process. Yep. And then when it's done, I send the big characters in and wipe out, and then I go back and play another level. And that's the way I've been grinding the other characters up and getting them up to where I need them to be. Um, is, there not per- is there not permadeath? Or is that an option? You can. You can have permadeath. I don't play with permadeath. Just because I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut the game off, and I'm not going to... Yep. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just going <laughs> to shut it off, and then, which is stupid, you know what I mean? Like, why play a permit after that you're going to do? I just, when I played Awakening, Awakening was the first game I ever played in the Fire Emblem series. I didn't play a permit after that, and I just was like, I did. I tried it, and I was just like, because what sucks is, like, 
you make one wrong move and you can lose everybody and it's game over. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you got to go all the way back and start over. And it's just like, man, do I really want to do this? I don't want to yeah, do this. Yeah, some of those battles could be half an hour, 45 minutes. Like, yes. really. Like, some of the later ones, they get really, really long. I'm yeah. glad I'm not playing with permadeath. It's, yeah. It does. It's a, totally, it's a totally different game. And it's not even yeah. just saying those words. Like, you, your strategy is exactly that illustration of it being a totally different game. You, you kinda, know. I feel like I'm you need to actually, too. yeah. I I feel like you actually need to go in, look at the battlefield. Here's an example. I just played chapter 26, so I go in and I'm I'm notorious for a lot of times of splitting my group up. Yep. And I'll send half to the left, half to the right. Well, I go mm-hmm. into this level and I split them, and I get wiped out. And I'm like, holy crap! Like like that. I'm going. So then I go. You know what? I should have split them up. Because if I would have kept them as a group, I could have done more damage. I keep them as a group, and I went because what it was was you had the main corridor in the middle, which is corridored off. You can't get into it, and then it's a circle around it. Well, what I originally did was left and right. This time I went to the left, and I actually went completely around and wiped everybody out around mm-hmm. the outside because you're fighting one or two at a time with like four or five characters, and they can't be even if they take one out, they're getting taken out. And you're just picking them off one by one by one, working around. Where if I would have been playing with permadeath, to get to level 26 and lose everybody would have sucked. Because then it's like, oh my god, I just lost every single character I built up to this point. So that's why I don't play with it. Because I know I, I know me, I'd be frustrated and I'd shut it off and I'd never go back. You know, so especially after putting 30 hours in to think that you could lose it all. That, that's mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some times where, where you'll go up against an enemy and you'll see that they've got a 36% chance of hitting you, mm-hmm. and then they do, and you're like, like it, it feels unfair, even though it shouldn't. Mm-hmm. There's That's just how probability works, but mm-hmm. you feel like, you shouldn't have been able to kill me there. So if, yeah. if permadeath is on, I would be losing my mind, because yeah. I just go, this game is cheap, and all that kind of stuff. Well, so. at, least it's, it's, at least it's not like the XCOM uh, percentage, hit percentage... Because there's always that thing when you play an XCOM games, and even if you've got like a 98% chance to hit an enemy, you, you're more than likely to miss. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course, it's just, yeah. Just something with XCOM, I don't know why, but it it does do that. But it's kind of strange because you could. It's weird because when it happens to you, like when you have a strong probability of killing someone on this hit, and it shows you, like, here's your probabilities, here's your chances, go. And you have that strong probability, and you don't kill them. It pisses you off. Yes. But then when they when it's the other way, and you actually escape, and then you wind up getting a hit on them, it's like, oh yes, like you get all excited. So, but it's not really, it's not super unfair. But I know that if it was permadeath, I would be so pissed. Especially like, there's been times like when you actually okay when you have when you bring in the amiibo, and I bring in Marth. Like there was times where it was like. I was about to kill him, and I missed him, and then he killed me. And then I had to go back, do a challenge, then come back and fight him again. And it was like, that would have, like, totally torqued me if that was the case. But, again, if you can use those characters, I strongly suggest using them. Well, Nintendo um, puts this weird little metal thing underneath the, the amiibo in the case, so, yeah, yeah. this guy is this guy's not well, coming out. You so. can't use Roy. Roy, he's one of the oh, ones... Okay. It's only well, the Marth, I, Marth, I'm definitely not pulling out of the box. Yeah, unfortunately for you, I, I have Marth outside the box, right? So I don't, <laughs> this is the advantage I have to taking him out of the box. Um, so, shout out to the train. So, we're going to kick off to our first topic, and that is the NX controller that was leaked. Now, we all know it's been debunked, um, at least in our... Th- in our thoughts, we hope it's been debunked. It hasn't been officially debunked by Nintendo, but the people that made uh, these photoshops of it basically came out and said, like, hey, we made these up. This isn't legit. Um, but my question is, is, like, it's, it's you know what? It's like we, at least in everybody's mind, like, right now, we we, we escaped the death. Like, we, 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 just, <laughs> we just slipped by... Because everybody like let out a huge sigh of relief when it came out that it was fake. My question is, and what the topic is more or less is, what are you guys looking from? What are you looking for from the NX controller? So, um, Toby, I'll throw it to you first. What what are you what are you looking for? Right. Well, 
it really all comes down to whether it is a hybrid device because if it is, then the handheld version can act as a controller for the main console. Mm-hmm. But if it is hybrid and it's an optional hybrid, then you're going to have to have another controller. So if you don't have the handheld version, it comes with another controller. Yeah. So I really like the, you know, I love the GameCube controller, but it's outdated now. It's comfortable, but, you know, the the uh, the Wii U Pro controller is just as good, really. It's got some issues. So if it was like an evolution of the Wii U Pro controller, you know, if it had proper triggers and, you know, it had the battery life, because I love the battery life. It doesn't have to have a screen on it, you know, because, you know, if it had a screen, all right, then maybe it, you could make Wii U games backwards compatible, but I just think it doesn't need, you know, it needs to pull away from the Wii U in that respect. Yeah. So, but yeah, if, you know, if there's a handheld version, then I wouldn't be against having something similar to a Vita for the handheld portion. Just something that's powerful enough to play, sorry, uh, to play, uh, you know, the console games on the go. So nothing too gimmicky. Yeah. But then, but then I don't know because Nintendo said it's totally different, so it could be something that none of us are thinking of. I mm. think it is something that none of us are thinking of. Honestly, mm. I think we all have it in our minds that it's a Vita type thing that you take it on the go and you do your thing, and then you come home and it syncs up with your home console and you go. I really think that like that's a possibility, but I personally feel like we're not even scratching the surface with what this thing is. Like I think they're going a totally different direction than what's in our minds. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean, what about you? What are you hoping for from this? I'm definitely hoping more for a Wii U Pro Pro controller style. I, I echo your thoughts, um, but I'm just wondering, yeah, about this whole hybrid thing. Like if you know, we all have the 3DS in our mind. It's a kind of a, a widescreen, kind of a, a horizontal fixture. But what about, like, the 2DS? Like, I'm wondering if this is, if we're going back to an open-facing hybrid kind of thing, or if it is going to close up on itself. I've always really liked the uh, the Game Boy Advance, where it closed up, you know, um, I like the 3DS clamshell kind of approach. So I'm just wondering if the 2DS was, like, a design, almost prototype for them to think, like, what if we, will people go for something like this? Um but really, so a couple things too. The controller has to be first and foremost somewhat similar to the Xbox and to the PlayStation One, so that you know the games can be ported over easily, which is what we're hearing. Yeah. And when I was when I first saw the the controller, the the leaked one and the fake one, I'm hoping to God it's fake. The the, the one, number one reason I thought it was fake was because the screen on the controller, unless it's a mirror image of what's on the TV that would make it difficult to just as difficult to program for as the Wii U was like if it was a second screen in the same way as the gamepad was and from everything that we're hearing that's not the case so that always kind of like that always stuck out to me a little bit that that why do why are they doing the second screen thing and then again if it's a uh, if it's part of the portable thing we'll see but i want it to be similar enough to the other consoles that that, it could, that the games that they get the third party support that they need that's really yeah. the, the biggest thing for me um, they've made some of the best controllers of all time so I just don't want them to go too far off but it, it would be neat for them to introduce something that we haven't seen before like they always do and and to echo your sentiments like I agree like they've made every generation except for I feel the Wii mm-hmm. and the n64 uh, were the best controllers across the board. Like, I feel like, obviously, the NES was, you know, it really, it was better than, than the Master System uh, game, bat, or the, 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 with the directional button and all that stuff, with the D-pad, I liked it better. Um, when you look at the Super Nintendo, like, I, that thing just felt great in your hands. GameCube, um, although the, the, the C stick was a little weird and out of place, and then and then the other buttons were kind of strange. Like it it felt very comfortable in your hands. You never were like didn't like the feel of it in your hands. And then that Pro controller, like I bought one at launch, but because it really didn't, you couldn't utilize it that much with most of the games that were out. I didn't really touch it that much and use it that much. Mm-hmm. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was the first time I actually used it because for whatever reason. 
there is a slight, and I know now that it's like I don't have my TV set on game setting, so there's a small delay between the two. With Donkey Kong Country, you need to be dead on precise, or yeah. you're going to die over and over and over. You're going to die a million times already just because the game's very hard, but without that precision, it was tough. So with well, the, the, the thing controller, is, on Donkey Kong, there's there's nothing on the gamepad anyway. It's just a black screen, so you don't even need the gamepad. Oh yeah. No, but it's yeah, but there was still a delay between. Like there was still a lag. Like if I was using the gamepad with the TV, there was a slight lag. Because when I went to the Pro Controller, I was spot on. Never skipped a beat. Never had a problem. So for me, that made me fall in love. Then when I went to Mario Kart, it just that was it. Like I, if, as much if I can use the Pro Controller, I try to use the Pro Controller as much as possible. You so, actually feel better at Mario Kart when you use the Pro Controller. Like you absolutely. actually can feel your skill level like kind of jump up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because all the trigger buttons and stuff just feel tighter, closer. It doesn't feel like you're stretching to reach stuff. So I, mm-hmm. I like it personally. I, I'm in love with that controller. Um, so for me, when I looked at this situation and I said, well, first thing. It didn't have buttons, and I was screaming about that. Like, I don't want virtual buttons. That would be the death of that system for me. Now, the the one thing that kept me going back in my mind was, like, if it's a hybrid, you don't have to have the portable version. I could still buy the NX because, in my mind, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you have the NX. That's your console. You know, that's your Wii U. And then if you if you look at it like the Wii U and you say, okay, my gamepad, I can take it with me and go on the road with it. Or I can use my gamepad to play on the TV. That's my thing. Obviously, I don't, nobody wants something as big as the gamepad, but I'm just saying in theory. So my thought was, okay, fine. I don't need that portable. Throw it away. I could care less. I'll just buy whatever controller they come with and the home console. Um. But if that's not the case, if that controller is not what we're looking at, which it seems to be the case now, I want to be able to not have to use whatever that portable device is as my main controller. Right. I want to be able to use that portable device to take it on the road. So in my mind, if I'm looking at it in two different animals, for my home console, I want something similar to the Pro Controller because – the battery life is on. I, I can't even tell you the last time I charged that thing. Yep. I, I really can. I get like almost 80 hours on it before I put mm-hmm. a charge on it. Like it's crazy. So that's number one. Number two, if we go with the hybrid, the handheld portion, I kind of wouldn't mind. I don't want to say something like the 3DS because I. I like that flap though. Like we were talking about before, like I like the fact that you just close it and, and it freezes where you are. So if that's a clamshell, like if they just put a clamshell on it, that's fine. I look at like the Game Boy Advance. I felt like that was a really phenomenal system. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously I want it to be backlit and stuff as opposed to the way it was, but something like that, I wouldn't be against a Vita. I feel like the Vita is just a little too long. Um, I don't like, the Vita, per se. I like the setup of it, but it just feels a little too wide. Like, I like the the dual sticks and stuff like that, but I feel like with the dual sticks and stuff, I don't feel like Nintendo can have that flap close. Do you think, like, if the the handheld part, like, do you think that we're going back to a single screen, like the Game Boy Advance, kind of like the SP? Like, I'm wondering if, if you can almost go right back to that original SP design where the bottom part is the controller, and the top part is the screen. It'll have to be like widescreen to mimic what's yeah. going on on your real TV. But I wouldn't mind that at all. And trying to shove in these buttons to make them really, really tiny and fit along the side. Like my, I have a big problem with the with the buttons on my Vita. I can't play Mega Man or Castlevania and things like that. I just, I just don't have the same like sure. button to button transitions that I do with uh, with a, a Nintendo controller. So I'm kind of hoping that things aren't too crammed in, I guess, is really what I'm looking for as well. I do feel like we're going back to... This is what I feel. I feel like if you have that portable device, Nintendo is going to say, like, if you want a dual screen, we can give that to you. Um, Like a Splatoon or like a Zelda, where that would become a map, per se. But they're not going to force it and cram it down people's throats. Meaning that's what kept... You know, the third parties away, I feel, because they felt like 
Because this is something that most people don't realize, but like in order to produce a game on um, Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo, a lot of times they want something a gimmick, something exclusive to their console to make people. Now, whether that means that there's something in the game that's different, example, SteamWorld Dig. All three versions of Dig are different. The Nintendo one has a special Easter egg zone that's a Nintendo theme zone in there. Sony has this weird statue thing collapsed with like the X to O, the triangle, all that stuff up there on, on it. And then like I don't know what Microsoft had, but they all did something different. Like to make it like, well, you're getting something different for your games. I feel like I feel like that the problem with the 3D or with the Wii U was Nintendo was going to everybody like, you need to use the dual screen. And these yeah. guys were just like, we don't want to use it. You know, like, okay, we'll throw a map on it, things like that, but we don't want to use it. And you it could tell you could feel it. You could tell with the games they're producing, they were just knockoff garbage of what they were already putting out for the other guys. I just want Nintendo to like drop the preferences and just go, we just want solid games brought here. Whatever that may be, doesn't matter. Just bring us solid games. That that will help. So I feel like if they have that second screen, it can't be forced on the on the third parties. Mm-hmm. That second screen to me, I almost don't really care if they use it or not. I, I like I said, if it's a Zelda thing where because you play Twilight Princess and you go, oh my god, this is awesome. You it know, is that, mm-hmm. that second screen, like Toby, you talk about it all the time. You like that, mm-hmm. that thing's fluid, you know. That's my question to you guys. Like, are you adamant that you want the second screen, or you are you thinking like me? Like, if they use it, they use it. If they don't, they don't. Uh, well, if they had a second screen, then that allows more stuff like Mario Maker. Like, they could port mm-hmm. port Wii U games over. Um, mm-hmm. but I was thinking, like, so everybody's really against this oval, this fake oval design that has virtual buttons, right? Mm-hmm. But what if they had a similar design that might not necessarily be oval, it might be rectangular, but it has r- actual real buttons and real sticks on the screen. Like, so the, the screen was built around the buttons. Like, do you think that there would be any potential use for that design, no. or would you like be totally against that as well? I would be against it. Because when you looked at the images that people overlaid in that. It just seems weird. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, let's be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll speak for myself, okay? I got fat-ass hands, fat fingers. So <laughs> if I'm reaching up for them sticks, I know that there's part of the screen I'm missing. Yeah. I don't... How pissed off would you be if you're down to your last heart in Zelda, you're running around, and something attacks you, but... It attacked you because your right thumb was on the right stick or on a button, and you didn't see it coming into the last second. Like mm-hmm. that's gonna piss a lot of people off. I feel so. For me, that design is garbage, and I didn't want anything to do with it. And that was the main reason. I mean, yes, the virtual buttons I didn't want nothing to do with. But in 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 addition, like I felt like you're gonna get some cheap deaths, and it's gonna piss people off. Like I said it in my in my video that I did. If they took that screen and they just... I didn't care. The design didn't bother me. Like, the oval design and stuff, like, okay, whatever. You want to be goofy, you want to be weird, knock yourself out and then do something stupid like you always do. I don't care. I did not want to play with that image stretched out beyond. Like, I felt like, bring it in within the sticks, and I'll play it all day long. Give me real buttons, bring that image in, I'm good to go. Because to sit there and go, oh, that thing... I know that was the big complaint, and a lot of people said it like, "Oh, it just looks weird. It feel it's not going to feel comfortable." We don't know because we didn't touch it. You know, what I mean, it could have been like one of the most comfortable things you ever used. Yeah. Nobody. Well, I, I made my own version. Oh, here we go. And I was practicing holding what? it. You no. Know, <laughs> and uh, but like, it felt weird to me as well. Like having my hands like covering the screen is like, hmm, like I'm not sure. I'd like to have a. Goomba come out from under my thumb, you know, yeah. to get me. So, 
Well, I guess we know who put out those leaked images now. Yeah. <laughs> Toby, Toby just outs himself, like, well, here it is. <laughs> Me, meanwhile, he has stick figures drawn on it and stuff like the like the actual uh, like the actual patent. Yeah. And here's my Swedish keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> Three guys off. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I guess we're all in consensus. We're glad that the leaks were hopefully pronounced fake. Like, again, Nintendo didn't come out with it, but, like, the guys that made them up said, hey, these are fake. We just did them. You know, for they work. were too fancy. I think I said this in the group, but they were too They were too fancy. Like, they were... They looked really expensive. Yeah. And I, I think uh, that's just so far, far off from what we've come to expect from Nintendo. Even the Pro Controller, as great as it is, it's a hunk of plastic. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and the Nunchuck, too. It's just this hollow piece of, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. And uh, so I took one look at this thing, and I went, this is closer to the Vita, and I think that it, the Vita is too delicate for a lot of people, too, right? Like, they, Nintendo is a toy company. They, they'll create something that's way more durable th- than that. So it just, that that's what kind of threw me at the very beginning, was it looked too expensive. <laughs> that, <laughs> no, you're right, though. You're right. It, it did. It, it, it looked very, yeah, the, especially the second image. The yeah, second it looked really image, good. Really good, really sleek, mm-hmm. and I was like, the second image, honestly, when I looked at the second image, I went, eh, I'm not hating that one as much. Again, I didn't like the virtual buttons. So that's the one thing that, like, just was my, my stickler. That was my stick to, like, I don't want the virtual buttons. I hate them. I think they're horrible. I've played games with virtual buttons, and it's the worst thing ever. So that was my feeling. Um, okay, anything else for that topic, or are you guys good? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to move on. The next thing I want to talk about was reviews and reviewers. And uh, what I'm bringing a lot of that from is with the Batman vs. Superman. When the reviews came out, like, if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, like, it's getting killed in the reviews. Um, Sean, we had talked privately, and you had mentioned Halo 5, how that game got crushed by reviews before it even launched, and it, it hurts the games. But for me, my my aspect is not so much the reviews, but the people. I don't understand why people cling so tightly to these reviews as gospel. Like, mm-hmm. this is the be-all, end-all, and, like, if they say it's garbage, it's garbage. Like if, if that, and and they could, we've been in situations where they're not saying the game's garbage or the movie's garbage, but the rating isn't like a ten or mm-hmm. you know whatever, and the community like spazzes. Like, what is your guys' feelings on all of this? Well, the thing about Batman and really a lot of movies that that come under fire like this, that's interesting, is when you look at a site like Rotten Tomatoes, it's not an individual review. So I think that there's... We'll, we'll have to break this topic up a little bit and break yeah. it down. So Rotten Tomatoes is an aggregate, right? Like, it looks at all the reviews that are going out for this thing, and it's a percentage of favorable favorable reviews. Yes. It's not an average score. So it's not like everybody's saying this thing is a 3 out of 10. It's the majority, the vast majority, um, are saying that it's not a very good movie. So I think that's one thing. That's why Rotten Tomatoes is so popular, is because people can look at that and say, like, what is the what is the community of reviewers saying as a group? So it's not like I'm I'm trusting the opinion of a game or a movie with one person. It's looking mm-hmm. at this whole group. So that's one thing. Um, but I think what you're getting at really is if you look, if you have many of us have a couple of reviewers that we go to or a couple mm-hmm. of sites that we go to, and then we will trust that implicitly. And I think a lot of that comes down to convenience and saving time and that's probably why um, it impacts people buying a game or seeing a movie so heavily is because time is so precious for everybody and you just you look to these reviews and go I need somebody to just tell me <laughs> like yeah. lean I'm kind of on the fence and just like push me to one side or the other and so that's that's really all it is it's just saving people the time and effort to go see this thing or go or you know go play a game or go to something else. And so that's why I think that it, people look so heavily into it. What about you, Toby? Well, the thing is, like, I think that with films, like at the cinema at least, you you know, you know, can go and see that movie, but you can't take it back. Like if you came out at cinema not like, not enjoying it, you can't 
get a refund unless yeah. there was something wrong with the projector or something weird like that. But yeah. but you know, with like a video game, you can go buy it. I mean, if you buy a physical copy, at least you can buy yeah. it. If you don't like it or there's something wrong with it, you can take it back or you can sell it on to somebody else. Yeah. So that's a big difference with games over movies, and you know that's why I think more people are more likely to give a game a go, even though it might get bad reviews. Whereas movies, it's like, okay, all I've heard is bad stuff. There's no point in even trying it, you know. Yeah. So I'm just going to skip it. But, you know, it is hard to say, like, you know, do reviews really hurt how people... Because you know, some people, like, some people hear a lot of bad reviews, but they, they know that this is a big film. Everyone's been excited for it and hyped for it over the months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They want to go and see it for themselves to make their own mind up. Like, even if it's a bad movie, there's so much hype around it, you think there must be something good in it. Like, yeah. so I don't know how much it really affects it because it's well, going to make it, a ton it, of money anyway. For, there's for, a crazy dichotomy yeah. between the critical reviews and people like fans going and watching it. They're Rotten, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, especially, you'll see 30% from the critics and then like 80% from, from fans. Yeah. And so. Yeah. I think next weekend is really when we'll see if reviews have really hurt this thing. This yeah. weekend was going to be a big deal no matter what, and it, we're already seeing that it's crushing a whole bunch of records. Yeah, I don't uh, know what... So we'll see where, next week. What are you seeing? Like, Because uh, I haven't seen anything as far as money or oh, where it okay. is. Um, but I hear it's doing... Well, I'll tell you what I saw. I went to the midnight showing Thursday night with my wife. So I didn't realize that there was actually earlier showings as well. Um, there was like a 7 o'clock and then whatever. There was 11.30 or whatever. But they actually put the midnight showing in late. And it was a last-minute add-on because they sold out all the earlier shows. When I went yesterday, I went at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the theater was packed. And I was like, holy crap. Like, I never expected to be at 10 o'clock in the morning, a theater packed with people. Um, there was a lot of kids there. During that, and and that's understandable. Like yesterday was Good Friday, so a lot of schools were closed, and it was spring break and stuff like that. So a lot of schools were closed. So, but a, bit, a lot of parents took them. Um, I was a little thrown off that there was actually kids at this movie because part of me feels it is a kids movie. Part of me feels like it's really not. Um, mm-hmm. Just because of the violence and stuff, and I feel yeah. like it's it's a little. There's a lot of fight, a lot of fight scenes. I can't imagine what the R-rated version is because. They're they're really going at it. Um, they're just going to insert Deadpool scenes. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> just copy those things in there. But my I feeling remember, is I was I was left at home when the original um like the Michael Keaton Batman came out. I was left at home. Oh really? I was not going to see that movie apparently because it was you know back then it was considered too violent and these movies are way beyond. Oh, that. they're way beyond that because yeah. it when when eighty nine hit I went a bunch of times to see it and. But I was older. I think I was. Yeah, but yeah, you were around World War Two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm that's, sorry. That's, that's this is the last time Sean. That one was. That was, <laughs> that was I, <laughs> Um. So my feeling is this, and this is what has me frustrated in, mm. in the reviews that I listen to, and I'm going to point out IGN in particular because when their review came out, I felt like it was bogus. Um. Mm. And I'm talking about the Batman. Their Batman v Superman. Thing. So they go, well, you know, it took a while for the action to really pick up. Well, when Man of Steel came out, your complaints were, there's just so much action that by the time they hit the final fight scene, it was yeah. kind of like, eh. So here's Zack Snyder and the, everybody going, okay, we need to adjust because this is what people didn't like in Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. They, they make the adjustments and they're still complaining about it. So that to me is an F you. You're just you're just complaining now to complain. That's my feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The second complaint was all the destruction that took place in Man of Steel. How can that be like that's just ridiculous? Superman wouldn't allow that and this and that. You're talking about an early Superman. He's still learning what's going on. He just became Superman, you know, in movie wise twenty minutes before. You know, he doesn't know all his powers. He's still learning everything. He's getting a grasp on stuff. You kill him for that. This movie, they address that, and you're complaining about it. You're complaining about them addressing it. So, again, it's like, that's an issue. Like, why are you complaining? The biggest, and I kind of, I was telling Toby about it, and I kind of, like, been getting attacked pretty strong. Kind of funny. T 
Tim and Greg did a spoiler cast, and Greg was kind of like, it's a good movie. I want to wait before I say I love it. I want to give it time. I want to go see it a couple more times before I make my analysis on it. Fair judgment, all for it, knock yourself out. Tim starts off, and he's like, oh, it's okay, whatever, and then proceeds to bash the movie the entire rest of the time. His first complaint was that the music had a lot of cue-ups. So, hypothetical. Or his example was, like, when Batman comes out, it's like the boom, 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 you know, that type of stuff. And then when uh, Wonder Woman comes out, they have, like, a music for her. And then when – he was basically saying, like, every time you saw these characters on screen, they had, like, a theme song going through. Number one, I think it's BS, because the biggest movie to do that is Star Wars. (laughs) You go back and watch any of the original Star Wars, every time Darth Vader comes on the Imperial March plays, every time. And that's okay for everybody. All the all those Star Wars fanboys, all the Marvel fanboys, they love it. They eat it up. They think it's amazing. And I'm not saying that I don't like it. I think it's cool. But when you watch this movie, and you watch any of the Nolan movies, every single time Batman comes on the screen, they do that stuff. And to say all of a sudden that it's an issue is ridiculous. And to point yeah. at that and go, that's an issue, to me, it's someone that's not, and he says at the beginning, like, I'm not a DC fan, like, I like comic book movies and things like that. Like, to me, it's like, you want a Marvel movie and you're pissed that it's not. And my feeling is, is like, I like that DC went the opposite way of Marvel. Mm-hmm. I don't want two of the same universes. I don't want cookie cutters. Like, people people complain that, like, they don't do the end scene, like, the end scene after the credits and stuff. Like, if they did it, what would everybody say? Oh, they're copying Marvel. So they do, uh, they do their own thing, and they're and they're being bashed for it. I feel like a lot of people don't like Zack Snyder, and that's where a lot of the hate comes from, you know. And I feel like it's not. Do I feel like it's the greatest movie ever? Absolutely not. Did I love it? Absolutely, I loved it. It had its strong points that made me love it. I'm a huge Batman fan. I felt like. Again, like I said at the beginning of the show, I felt like Ben just killed it with this. Um, I loved Wonder Woman. I love Henry Cavill. I think he does a phenomenal job as Superman. He kills Brandon Routh as far as Superman goes. Um, yeah. Is he Christopher Reeve? I don't know. I'll leave that to other people's judgment. I like him more than Christopher Reeve. I, I, feel like, I like him. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Amy Adams did a great job as Lois Lane. I think she was better in this one than she was in the original as Lois Lane. I felt like they gave her more to work with. Um, sure. Does it have its flaws? Yeah, I and, and, and I'm not the one. See, my thing is, is, and I posted this the other day, I posted a picture of The Dark Knight Returns, my, my comic book, and it's all beat and battered because I read it a million times. My feeling is, is don't sit there and try to tell me what's wrong with this movie unless you've read The Dark Knight Returns and The Death of Superman. Because my feeling is, is he stuck very as close as he possibly can. Now, obviously, he can't do everything because they're two different. You know, he's trying to combine the two kind of. But I feel like if you haven't read those books, you don't know where the source material is coming from. The true source material in the original of Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor was a like a, a goofy scientist, a mad scientist. He winds up like getting locked away and all that stuff. And when he comes out, that's when he comes out as like this maniacal madman like genius like he's Mm -hmm. so you see in this movie both sides of it you see like the goofy scientist that like the mad scientist same thing but you also see the genius behind him where he's pulling the strings as the puppet master so i didn't mind that lex Luthor that they they portrayed i feel like when we see him again when we see jesse eisenberg again like when whatever i don't know i don't think he'll be in justice league but when he eventually rears his head again like i feel like he's going to be the lex Luthor everybody's used to but go back and look at, like, the Christopher Reeve Lex Luthor. Like, he was – Gene Hackman was weird. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he wasn't, like – you know, he wasn't maniacal. So I, I, I look at the complaints that are coming, and I just go, I don't get them personally. It's That's a, just it's a loaded movie. movie to try and evaluate, right? Like, it's a yeah. – this is a – this is a – it's a big movie. It's a long yeah. movie. It's two and a half hours long. Yeah. They, they cram – a whole bunch of stuff into it, and so yes. it's, the thing about this movie is that you can you can attack it or evaluate it at from seventeen different angles. Yeah, you can look at it as a film, and I think that's for me that's where it sort of like falls is yeah. is as a film it doesn't really flow. It, like to me, it didn't have a flow to it. It felt very 
disjointed is a word that's going around a lot. It was like somebody learning how to drive standard for the first time. It was like like chugging in between yeah. gears. I'll give bit. you that. I'll give you that all day long. I agree. Yes. But when, when I when I think about because I saw it on Thursday, so I've been thinking about this ever since because that's just the way my brain works. You know, when I and I look at different parts of the movie. So when I think about Ben Affleck as Batman, check mark. Lex yeah. Luthor for me is a check mark. Mm-hmm. The music I thought was amazing. I yeah. really like like when Wonder Woman comes in, well, and her as well. Check mark. Casting was great. Yeah. And the fact that everybody has their theme, these are all good things. And so I I walk away from the movie thinking. Well, did I actually like this movie? Because when it was in front of me, I wasn't enjoying myself. I found myself kind of like shifting in my seat all the time, going like, oh, are they really doing this? Like, oh, this scene is like, this just isn't working. And man, that dialogue was super awkward and really not like it was delivered kind of in a cheesy kind of way. And so in a way, I'm not, I'm conflicted. I'm not sure if, if the reviews prior had kind of tainted me going into it, thinking like, wow, this is going to be a pile of garbage and then yeah. I'm, I'm watching it going this is kind of a pile of garbage um but i mean just the same way i look i can look at things that i didn't like at all i thought the opening i've heard some i thought i think joey on on his spoiler cast they loved the opening with uh with with uh batman sort of like child story right yeah I thought it was horrible. I thought really? it was. I thought it was really. One. This is my whole problem with the, yeah. really the entire movie. Is, <clears throat> are we getting into spoil it? No. No, 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 no. But my whole thing is that they rush through a lot of really important beats, and just to be able to get to a certain point in the movie for everything else to play out. So my biggest problem with Batman v Superman is that we didn't have a Ben Affleck solo movie before. And then I start to think, like, can I actually pan a movie because of that? Like, I I really wish that we did have, um, like, who is this Batman? Like, why is he so so violent and all of these different things? Like, why is he the way that he is? I wanted to know Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, they just sort of, like, they had these scenes where they they would put it in front of you and go, like, see, that's, what, that's how it is, and this is this character, and this is this character, just so you know. And it just, it felt really rushed, um... So for me, there was a as a film, it skipped past a lot of the things that I would really like, and I I felt like this movie was just trying to catch up to a point where where DC is able to say, look, we've got an expanded universe as well. Yeah. And building off of Man of Steel as like that's the kickoff point, and this is within the same world, it seems to me a little too convenient where they mm-hmm. kind of go, oh yeah, that's what we meant all along. It's you know, it's it's really. It felt kind of forced. It felt like there was a ton of executives in the room saying, we need to make sure that we do this. And like, okay, here's your scene. Check. And so it just it just seemed like a series of, of check marks as, I, I as the movie were, went along. I think what you're also looking at is they're trying to get to Justice League. So, yes, they have to tell a lot of stuff. Yeah. Throwing Superman and Batman in a movie together. And that's why I say, like, until you've read Dark Knight Returns, don't tell me that this movie's bad. And the reason why I say that is, is that's the Batman that's in this movie. It's a Batman that's been doing it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And he even makes a reference when he says to Alfred, like, we've been doing this long enough. How many promises have we heard that fall through? Like, Mm -hmm. he's just a guy that's like, F, you know, like, in Dark Knight Returns, it's Batman that kind of goes against the government and is like sc- throws his middle finger up and is like, "Screw you! I'm doing what I'm going to do. I'm going to protect the people." That's mm-hmm. the Batman that's in this movie. Like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to protect the innocent people so that nobody goes through what I went through in my childhood, and I'm going to take the scum off the streets. And that's what like you look at where he's super ultra violent to. It's the scumbags. The guy's a pedophile that he like bludgeons and does all that stuff too so that's the stuff that like when i read where when i watched it i was sitting there with a smile the entire time because i'm like oh my god they basically gave me dark knight returns and i never thought as a 13 year old sitting there flipping through reading that book for the first time i would ever see that on the big screen Mm -hmm. so for me to actually see them almost Beat for not beat for beat, but almost just pull the second half of the Dark Knight Returns out and throw it on the big screen. I was just like, wow! Like yeah, I was just I, giddy. I kept thinking of the Dark Knight Returns, like the animated feature. And for <laughs> me, like you're right, it was sort of like beat for beat. And for me in the animated series, it, it worked. Yeah. But maybe because because it was animated, it was so far removed from yeah. the film version of Batman that I think yeah. about. So I don't know that like it all it all affects 
how you experience this movie, like just yeah. what your experience with Batman is and with all the movies and then the books and then the, all the other stuff, it all taints it. And so it's not yeah. surprising that a group of movie reviewers who probably haven't read a comic book in their entire life or a yeah. other portion of them are, are coming at this movie in that way. But it's, it's encouraging to see like everybody else posting their own reviews and I think overwhelmingly there's a lot of fan support. I think this movie's going to do just fine. Yeah, I think so too. But um, I don't want to go – we'll stop there. Cause we, it's hard know. to talk about it without like, yeah, I know. saying like – Without this saying – like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, um, and I know Toby's sitting there like, oh, shut up. I need to go eat lunch. So, <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong, Toby? No, you're not wrong. <laughs> Thank you. So um, – so that is all. Thank you guys for listening to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. We appreciate that. Um, watching us on YouTube, if that's how you watched us. Sean, tell everybody where they can find you at. Oh, I'm so sad this is over. <laughs> they can find me. <laughs> like, Toby, you go eat your lunch. We're just going to keep chatting. Now. Uh, <laughs> we have to do this more often. So everybody can find me on Twitter, Sean Capri. It's Sean like Connery and Capri like the pants. And I do a weekly podcast that Bobby has been on. Uh, called We the Gamer Cast, and uh, it's a little different. We just kind of go one on one with uh, content creators from around the internet and just find out how they got started with video games and different things like that. It's uh, not really talking about the news, but um, if you want to know your favorite podcaster a little bit better, then uh, give it a listen. Bob, Bobby, you were on episode 15, I think. Yes. If I, if I remember correctly. Something so, like that, yeah. It's still, yeah, it's still and it, Bobby is also sorry to interrupt. That's all right. <laughs> but I was just listening to the latest uh, episode today, and I was surprised to hear Bobby's voice right at the very start. I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I've got a special little endorsement from yeah. uh, Bobby and Mrs. Bobby. <laughs> yes. I'm actually on episode 16. 16. I okay. I have it saved on my phone because I enjoy it so much. So. I, I, I listen to well, like if I don't have like if I run through everything else and I go well I listen to oh you don't want to listen to this so I, I like it I like oh I love it yeah that was one of my favorite things to do so it, it sort of has set the tone for almost all these other all these other episodes so we the gamer cast um, on iTunes every Monday yes and not to sound like an egotistical like oh I listen to it all the time like I like it because I it, I do something that I don't get to do often and it's talk about my childhood. And like yeah. the different thing, and that's so for me when I listen back, like I literally smile because I'm like, man, I remember all this stuff, like you know. So it's it's that's why I like that episode so much. Um, because I don't keep any other episode that I've been on before. And Toby will tell you I'm like a podcast whore. Mm-hmm. I go on everything. I lose um, track. I'm actually on I'm actually on Nintendo Dads this week. So there you go, Toby. You can listen to that. <laughs> one. <laughs> so. uh Toby, you can follow him, find him. He's on Instagram at the Amiibo underscore workshop. Um, if you're curious not about the, him, Not the Amiibo underscore okay. workshop. At Amiibo underscore workshop. Yes. And bad. I will, I will be uploading some pictures soon to that account. Yes. Um, if you want to see some stuff that Toby's done, like I actually – well, you can go to his YouTube channel, um, Amiibo Workshop. But I also featured him this week in my um, Amiibo Customizer Showcase with his Wolf, Star Wolf Amiibo. Um, and uh, you can also follow him on Twitter at the – no, I'm just kidding. At, <laughs> at Toby <laughs> underscore take. Uh, you can follow me. Um, that's where I'm getting it from because I, I am at the Geek Gurus on Instagram and on Twitter. So that is all. Peace, mother. Bye.